Okay, now the turning point to an evening of unnecessary detail. Uh, he lives in Brighton and uh, works as a digital artist. A phrase that normally makes me downright sceptical. He is, however, about 82% digital and about 22% Artist in that narrow, some of you are twitching. Four <laughs> percent overlap. <laughs> he does amazing things with electronics, overly powered lasers, and art. So, to show us some vector graphics live on stage, and during this bit, no one else is allowed on stage who is not a trained laserist, real time. Right? <laughs> Should the laser fall off? It is currently very firmly balanced on the edge of. <laughs> Close your eyes in a microsecond. <laughs> I'd focus on closing your favourite eye first. <laughs> Seriously, if that falls, close your eyes, look that way, no one come on stage. He's generally a trained laser. Can you please put your hands together for seven people? So, um, yeah, Matt kind of did all my jokes. <laughs> There's only so many laserist jokes, aren't there? But yes, I am a laserist. I can use high-powered lasers. Oh, that's really very dangerous. Actually, just as an incredibly <laughs> they to dim the lights, just that. <laughs> so, yeah, right, right. I know, yeah, it's really... Just as a very, I know it's an evening of unnecessary details, I'll start by saying that this uh, laser is very, very low power, about half a milliwatt. Um, and the reason for that, that handheld pointer lasers are half a milliwatt, because they've done the sums and they've worked out that it takes uh, 0.25 of a second, right, to, to damage your retina with one of these, uh, which is the blink reflex uh, for most people. Most people. <laughs> <laughs> So there we are. Now, um, fairly, like I said, fairly newly qualified laserists, and uh, they're a rather interesting bunch. Interesting bunch, the laserists. I think you know what I mean uh, by that. They have one joke. The joke is in the form of a safety warning sign, and the joke is, do not look into the beam with your remaining eye. <laughs> uh, so obviously that's a uh, very <laughs> terrible joke, isn't it? That's the only one we've got, right? Um, so yeah, this is the sort of lasers I work with normally. 11 watt lasers, so 22,000 times brighter than, than this pointer. Um, and so that will damage your retina in, yeah, probably a few nanoseconds. It's <laughs> um, serious stuff. Don't look into the beam. But I'm not uh, initially going to be talking about lasers. I'm going to be talking about, well, you know, this is my work on these massive screens. But tonight, I'm going to be talking about small screens. Yeah, cathode ray tubes. Yeah? Who misses cathode ray tubes? Yeah, right? That weird irradiated feeling of being... <laughs> it's sort of, it's, I don't know, it's, it's in my childhood, right? Sitting near the telly and just feeling your hair stand up, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I miss. It's sort of the warm and fuzzy. So they used to be literally everywhere. I mean, this obviously, these uh, ubiquitous vacuum sealed glass bulbs that that were all of our screens for many, many years. But now you're more likely to see a cathode ray tube uh, on a dump, right, than, uh, than actually in the TV. Oh, look at this. This is great. I've just found all these pictures off the internet. Oh, but look, that's where the cathode ray tubes are now. It's pretty sad. But I think probably even the millennials will remember, like, their early experiences with TVs would have been cathode ray tubes. Look at that. It's pretty fun. Oh, look. Commodore 64, I don't even know what that is. They look very happy about it. Yeah, oh, look at him. <laughs> He's very excited about his cathode ray tube, although it could actually be that he's more excited about this little rig there. Do you recognize that? Tari VCS 2600 with an automatic cartridge changer. <laughs> no longer have this hassle of removing a cartridge and then putting another one in. Just push a button. That's how happy that makes him. <laughs> um, but of course, you know, arcade machines, this is where, this is the natural habitat of a good cathode ratio. And look at that, I mean, just getting the glow in your face. Yeah, most arcade games were built on cathode ray tubes. 
Because it's an evening of unnecessary detail, I thought I'd explain how a cathode ray tube works. So here we are. We have the cathode there. And loads of electrons just come flying out of it into the front of the glass, right? Now, obviously, electrons don't just pass through air unless it's like lightning or something really heavy. But this is a vacuum, right? So the, the cathode ray just flings right through the vacuum and hits this layer of phosphor on, on the inside of the front of the screen. And the electron beam makes it glow. Now, there's an arrangement of coils here that, when they're charged, creates a magnetic field that pulls the cathode ray left or right for these two green ones there, or up and down for these little, these red ones here. And so, if you're making a picture, you can pull the cathode ray, like, all the, start at the top left, do a line of pixels, getting brighter and darker for every pixel that you need to, switch off the cathode ray, do the next line, and so on, 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 and so on and you have like a TV picture. So that's pretty cool. Oh, it's a colour cathode ray tube. Um, I just don't have ex time to explain that. <laughs> but of course, many of our favourite arcade characters were rendered in this way. You can see the little pixels. Oh, look at Pac-Man. <laughs> oh, that's nice, isn't it? Um, but there are other types of cathode ray tubes, although we're used to seeing these raster pixel-based scanning ray, uh, cathode ray tubes. There are other types of cathode ray tubes, ones that don't scan in lines, one that literally just moves the ray around to draw the shapes, like in this oscilloscope, like in this oscilloscope as well. It's literally just moving the cathode ray up and down really fast, and the phosphor sort of glows for a little while after the cathode ray's moved on. So you get these permanent images. So some of the best arcade machines didn't use a scanning cathode ray. They used a vector cathode ray tube, yeah, which sometimes, I know, yeah, it's pretty exciting, yeah. So these were, you know, just like the ones I explained before, they're literally zipping the cathode ray around, drawing the shapes. You know, it's such a high quality of image. You know, compared to Mario, like, <laughs> look at that, like, and now, look at that. Yeah, I mean, it's just such a beautiful aesthetic, isn't it? Lunar Lander, anyone who knows my work will know that I'm a huge fan of Lunar Lander. And again, that was a vector screen, really beautiful uh, high, resolu well, high resolution lines, right? Because they're analog lines, they're just moving the line like that. There's no pixels. Oh. Yeah? Star Wars, the arcade game, another vector screen. So it's literally moving around, drawing these shapes with the cathode ray, and it's a full color vector monitor, how cool is that? So there's three uh, cathode rays, one for red, one for green, one for blue, going through a, a mask, which I can't, I can't explain, it's just too, too complicated. Oh, look at that, the ATAT walk, it's properly 3D. I mean, it's really hard to do 3D with pixels in those days, but with vectors, it was possible. There's also Tempest, oh, and the Vectrex. So this is if you wanted a vector monitor at home, you could get the, the little Vectrex machine, which would, be, which would come with this big cathode ray tube built in, and it would draw the shapes for you. And you had overlays so it could change the color of certain areas. Such a gorgeous thing. They're quite hard to get now, uh, probably a couple of hundred quid on eBay, because they're so rare. But asteroids, yeah? Asteroids was probably the first killer app of arcade games, right? It wasn't the first arcade game. I think it came out around 79, um, but it was just a bit later than Lunar Lander, and Lunar Lander sold a few thousand, but Asteroids just took over all the arcades. There are thousands and thousands of Asteroids machines using this gorgeous vector monitor, but I just want to draw your attention to something. Those bullets, look at those. They're so, so beautiful and glowy. They're just like glowing up. Like, and if you've ever seen a real Asteroids Vector arcade machine. Who has? Yeah, yeah right? And you know the bullets, right? They literally blind you. It's like so cool, like retinal burn for the win. Um, but most people don't get to experience Asteroids. Well, first of all, how does it do it? Well, when it's drawing the bullets, it either just turns the power of the beam like full on, or it just lingers there a bit longer than some of the other shapes, which means that it makes a much brighter spot. It's very hard to recreate that. Like, I don't know if you've heard of MAME, the arcade machine emulator. Like, you can run arcade games on your computer at home. But this is what Asteroids looks like, right, on MAME, right? Just can look. Wow. <laughs> so beautiful. Uh. <laughs> 
pixels. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to see pixels, do you, when you're playing a vector game? <sighs> yeah. OK, so my challenge is how do we recreate the effect of this vector screen here tonight on this big scale? <laughs> yes, of course, of course the answer is lasers. Like, if we look at the laser, it looks a bit like that, but oh, hang on. I'll get a bigger laser. I've got this laser, it's so powerful. It's got a key. You have to turn it on with the key. In fact, I might just turn this to the other one. Hang on. Oh, are you ready for this? <sighs> yeah? <sighs> I'm just going to leave that on like that for a, for a while. Actually, let's take the filter off, because this is a really cool laser. Whoa, holy Whoa. shit. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. See that? Look at the beam on that. Uh, this is, oh, I really do have retinal burn there. <laughs> It's just uh, it's, uh, all in a day's work for a laserist. <laughs> I don't think you're properly an official laserist until you've got a, a damaged retina, so that's pretty, that's pretty good. Um, anyway, yes, so you can see that this laser, hang on, let's just use the smaller one. <laughs> that's too bad. Usually when I do this demo, it's on a much bigger screen, much further away. That one really just gent. Did it hurt you as well? It'll be, you'll be fine. <laughs> I'm trained in this stuff. <laughs> It'll be entirely fine. It's fine. Um, so yeah, this one's a bit more easy to look at, right? But you can see that's a really beautiful glowy line. So we've got part one of the problem. We, we could do the bullets like this. It would probably take a few of us. And then we could draw the shapes like that. Let's draw an asteroid. Whoa, look. <laughs> oh, it's coming for you. It's coming for you. <laughs> oh. All right, so that's not really going to work. But I have brought uh, a bigger laser, yeah, which is just down here. And this is where I have to be a bit careful. <laughs> um, so I thought I could recreate asteroids with my big laser. Now, this laser has, uh, unlike these handheld lasers, there's a system in this laser to move the, the laser beam around. There's a, a couple of mirrors attached to galvanometers. So you can see the mirror there and the galvo there. The galvo is like in VU meters, you know, on your audio systems, the little needle that goes up and down. That's a galvanometer. It's like, I think it's some system of a coil uh, connected to a spring. So you can very, very quickly move these mirrors left and right. That one to make the beam go left and right, and this one to make it go up and down. And you can move the laser beam around to make shapes. Yeah, should we, should we try it? OK, all right. Let's, let's, let's Turn on the laser. OK. I was just trying to create a bit of drama. <laughs> Didn't really work, did it? <laughs> right, let's just make sure it's all connecting all right. Oh, have I got, um, yeah, I've got a green light. Let's just do a test pattern. Oh, well, there you go. Oh, that's pretty cool, isn't it? <sighs> Sorry, yeah, that works. OK, I don't know how to build up to this, really. Um, maybe I should just, should I just put on asteroids? Are you ready for this? I might just need the lights dimmed a little bit more. Okay. Dramatic hush descends on the audience. Right, here we are. Are you ready for asteroids in a laser? <laughs> okay, cool. Well let's just have a let's let's just have a little game. I might just in fact, you know what I did do, which is like really geeky? Oh, actually, I forgot to put the sound in. Hang on. Just mute everything. I'm just going to do. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, jeez. It doesn't reach. Oh. I, I have literally no idea what just happened. Was it good? Oh, right, hang on. Yeah? A bit more volume, maybe? Okay. Okay. Right, let's just pause it there. <laughs> right, because I need to explain what's going on, yeah? Okay, let's just have a look at some of my graphics. Let's turn the laser off, sorry. Right, oh, it'll come back, it'll come back, don't worry. Okay, so let's take a look. So, I'm drawing each one of these shapes with my laser. I'm just 
dictate and I'm figuring out the path that it needs to take. You can see these blue lines? That's where the laser's going. I'm figuring out the shortest route. And it's just hanging around a bit longer on those bullets. That's why those bullets are so super gorgeous and bright. Um, in fact, you know what I did do, which is really geeky, <laughs> is, uh, well, sorry, none of this has been up to now. But, <laughs> but this is an Atari joystick. <laughs> from a, a VCS 2600, like the one you saw with the cartridge swapper. So this is from the 70s, this joystick. But I was thinking, well, how can I get it to, to play a laser game? Well, actually, I just put in a tiny little bit of electronics in there, and it's now pretending to be a keyboard, a USB keyboard. It plugs into my computer, and I can play the game with this joystick. Whoa. <laughs> oh, hang on. It's better with the laser on, isn't it? OK, let's, let's turn the laser back on. Well, you know what I can do as well, which is really cool, is that I can make the laser do dotted lines. Yeah, so you can actually see the path of the laser now. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Whoa. And, and in fact, I can obviously, I can pause time, and then I can actually make the laser slow down so you can see how it's being drawn. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so you're all converts now, right? <laughs> okay, let's just speed that back up again. There you go. Okay, so, um, so it kind of got me thinking. Well, obviously, uh, asteroids is pretty cool. Hang on, what am I doing? Uh, I was, oh, I was going to turn the path off again. <laughs> I can't actually see it on my computer. I have to look at this. Um, oh, look, I can even... I can, I can fly around as well, look. <laughs> Well, it's actually really hard to control. <laughs> oh, okay. Amateur. So I thought... I, I didn't hear that. What was that? Amateur. Amateur, yeah. It's, yeah, it's true. But I'm a professional laserist. I didn't say anything about arcade games from the 70s, like before I was born. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Uh, what else? Well, yeah. Right, already, like, this is the, the millennials, right? <laughs> it's like, yeah, what else have you got? Well, I thought a laser makes these old classic games way, way better, right? So I was thinking, well, what modern game could I, could I recreate with my laser? What classic modern game? <laughs> So you figured out, right, that this is Flappy Bird, the deviously, fiendishly difficult iPhone game that was so difficult, the, uh, the author actually took it off the App Store, right, because he, <laughs> he was so annoyed. Everyone was going, it's too hard, and he was like, I don't want it anymore. I can't handle you. Took it down. Um, but I love Flappy Bird, even though it's really, really fiendishly difficult. Now, you might notice that the bird is just flying up and down by himself, but he's actually not flying up and down by himself. He's taking the volume level from the microphone on my computer. <laughs> and he's using that to fly higher or lower, because this isn't Flappy Bird. This Flappy Bird runs off audience applause. <laughs> right? So... <laughs> really good because I just calibrated the system, right? <laughs> so that's really cool. Um, so of course this isn't Flappy Bird anymore. It is what I call Crappy Bird. <laughs> and it's, it's obviously powered with a laser, so it's called Laser Clappy Bird. Are you ready to play Laser Clappy Bird? <laughs> okay, three, two, one, go! <laughs> too sensitive, maybe? <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll just uh, turn the sensitivity down a bit, actually. Just, just test it out for me. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Are you happy?
happy with that? Yeah? Okay, three, two, one, go! Alright, try again. Yeah, everyone, let's get one point. Okay. Just one point. <laughs> now, do you realise what you just did? Yeah? You, you were so elated at having got one point that you just think you lost your shit. And you're going to get another point. Okay, so now let's just try getting two points. <laughs> Come on, let's just get one more point. Come on, just one. Come on, let's. <laughs> that was really, really nice work, everyone. Excellent. I did warn you that it was difficult, didn't I? But that's cool. Okay, so oh, I've just got to make sure not to walk over there. So we're about to... <laughs> now, we are about to go into a break, which means that you can, if you're very lucky and very orderly, uh, queue up at the front of the stage. Nowhere near the laser, probably this side. Uh, if you queue up this side, then you'll get a chance to play Asteroids. Uh, but that's been me. Uh, yeah, let me know what you thought on Twitter. I'm Seb underscore L-Y. Uh, but thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed the laser. Thank you.